All right, let's take one of these examples that we did in the previous video. I'm going to use the, the wavetable kick that we made. I've just made a pattern that keeps going basic four on the floor. And what we're going to do in this video is that I'm going to turn them into a bit more unique IDM sounding kicks and if you sponsor me on Patreon you will be able to download the sample pack that we will be creating you will also be able to download a whole bunch of other IDM library kick libraries that I've made using a similar sort of technique so you will be able to get access to a few hundred different very unique kick samples that you can use as you like um, and I'm just going to take you through the process of just generating uh, a sample pack quite quickly using this so if you so we got this quite basic kick and then i'm just gonna um, use this max for live device uh prandom mac 5 if you have not seen that before please check out my previous tutorial where i'm using this uh, it's a custom one that you will be able to get if you sign up to my patreon as well Basically, what this does is every time it receives a MIDI note, it generates a random value that you can map uh, to any MIDI, ma MIDI mappable thing. So just as an example, I can map this to the wavetable position on this one. So we, at the moment, we just have the sine wave, but it would do that. As you can see, it's jumping around randomly. Um, we probably don't want the higher ones so much. We can limit this range. So we just get a bit of dynamic difference. We can also map this to maybe the decay of the pitch envelope. So probably don't want the longer ones, but Okay, so you see we get a few different flavors. But now to the most interesting thing, we are gonna do some, what should we call them? Um, combined effects chains, is that the right way of doing it? We're gonna create different effects channels that we can send this through to generate some interesting, interesting results. Um, and one of my favorite ones to apply to kick drums and also some bass sounds is the saturator which is a distortion plugin that comes with Ableton. It's using different algorithms to create the effect. Uh, it's set to analog clip by default but we're going to go down to sine fold. We're also going to set turn on the soft clipping. I think what the sine fold does it applies a sine wave and does a, does a bit of frequency modulation. So it takes the original, in this case, the kick drum, and when it runs through there, it just adds this um, sine wave to it, which just blends it in and make, create all these overtones. And so if we run this now, and if I turn this up, creates a bit of a, I don't know what you would call that flavor. So we're gonna map some of these to make them a little bit more random. The drive, we probably have to be super careful with. We want that to sort of stay around 50%. So we just create a little bit of a margin there, maybe something like that. Oh, that was, yeah, so for the bass, we just make that to be an inch a little bit tighter as well, so we don't get... Maybe we just change the dry wet bits so we don't get. I'm so keen on that positioning thing there. Anyway, let's that's that's fine. Now, if we hit Command G uh, on the saturator, we will uh, confirm. We will basically make create a, a, an audio effects rack. And if we click on that icon, you can see what channels is in that rack. Currently, we only got the saturated, so we only got one channel. So we're going to add another one. Let's try the redux. So if we solo that channel, so we don't hear the saturator anymore. 
gosh, I'm not so keen on that decay envelope before you. That's fine. Okay, so let's map that to the rate. And then we have run out of randomness, so we need more of these. You can keep adding as many as you like, or as many as your computer can cope with. I have a really crappy one that's really old, and you can probably hear the fan running in the background, so they're not very... These ones are not very taxing, they're only map 5. Uh, we need to limit this range so it can't quite go down all the way to the bottom, because it gets pretty harsh. One of the things, unfortunately, you can't map random map five to itself, but if you create not, and one can map to the other, these two values at the end allow you to ease in and ease out to value rather than it jumping straight to the new value. You can either sort of like smoothly go there and smoothly move into the next one. So as you will see now, I'm just gonna make these Blindy. So now you can see sometimes rather than jumping, these dials will move more slow. Creating some interesting effects. Let's add something more. Should it be an erosion maybe? No, let's do a delay. delay. probably saw my previous tutorial on this, or maybe you didn't. Setting up to jump, not going to go through, but I really like tight short delays where we can modulate the sample time. And we need to set the range for this. Maybe we can combine that with a filter. Ooh, filter, 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 where is the filters there? And then we need more randomness, so we add another one of these. We can map that to actually we do we map that to this, we get a bit of easing in and easing out. And we probably want to set the frequency so it doesn't go all the way down because then that keeps me split completely. Oh yes, maybe we want a little bit of randomness on the resonance as well, but not all the way up because then we just scream. That's some interesting kicks. Uh, let's do one more effect. Delays are quite fun to create with those things. There is another one which is pretty mad for old grain delay. Let's make that as another channel. So that one. Let's automate the frequency and the pitch. And with this one, I'll just turn down to dry wet a bit. Let's make a super short delay time. That lets there's some stereo stuff happening in there, so I'm going to add a utility. Oh, did I read that? Uh, utility in here. Actually, I can make that of the whole chain and just make sure that it's mono because the kick drums usually you want them in mono. That's not quite crazy enough. 
Okay, I'm going to add just one more thing here. I'm going to use uh, this spaghetti thing. I can't spell spaghetti. What am I going to spell? This is a free Max for Live device, which um, I can't remember where I found it. You don't need to use this. It's more just illustrating. There's not really any rule to all this stuff. <clears throat> just add crazy effects. What this one does is, um, I can't even explain. Just gonna plug some of the randomness into this thing there. And now we're gonna get some crazy, crazy sounds out of this, I think. Okay, maybe we actually do the dry wet here as well. Then. Okay, and then we add another chain which doesn't have any effects on there, so we can get some slightly more normal drums. Let's turn off the solo, so now all of them would sound at the same time. That's probably not what we want, so we're going to click on this chain button. There, I'm going to show you a little trick, which you may already know. Uh, so we select all of them, and we drag them out all across here. That's done. And then we right click here, distribute ranges equally. Now, while this is this blue thing is over the first one, it will only be the first channel sounding, which is the saturator. The second one, it will be the second channel sounding, which is the redux. And now we're going to use this random, oh gosh, we ran out of random again. So we need another one. And then we map that to it. So every hit, it will run it through a different effects chain. Generating a whole bunch of different kicks for you in all infinity if you want to. So now we're going to set up an audio track. Um, I'm going to hit that. Oh, that's already, no, we're going to have that one. So now, um, when we hit record, we set that to resample, hit record, and now when it reaches the end of the loop, it will automatically stop recording it. Forgot something. Uh, let's add some compression at the end of this channel because otherwise they may not we get too much fluctuation of volume. I can hear something crazy going on. It's probably some sort of delay that is still ticking away. Let's add a drum bus to this. Okay, these really punch now, so that's good. Let's let's hit record.
shut up. Okay, there we are. You've just created 128 unique kick drums. You can run this over and over again to create more. Um, so then we right click that one, slice to new media track. As we were using quarter notes, uh, that's set up here. You can choose whatever you, you've done, but quarter notes here. Um, you can slice that to something, and I have set up a preset slicing that to a sampler in this case. Hit OK. Now, we are just going to turn the filter off in this one. Now we got all those samples already mapped to different keys. So we got all those different kick drums. You click here, uh, this little trick, uh, Command A, select them all, or Control A, I suppose, on a PC. Choose Crop Sample. That takes them and saves them out as individual samples uh, to your hard drive. So you don't need to go in and slice them manually. Um, I, I Sometimes you get some fluctual, fluctuations in volume. Uh, or you get a little click at the end of the sample. There could be little things like that, but the process is so quick and you can churn out so many sample out sample libraries. Um, so I think it's still worth it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm just going to show you one more thing. So then when you've done that, you click on, right click on one of the samples and choose show in finder. The Mac unfortunately creates all these Mac poo. They are ASD files that I'm just going to throw away. And here we got all the samples now that we've just generated. So just going to find them and select them all. And we rename them to, let's say, TFP and kicks wave table as I already got one and got two. Rename all of them. Boom. Sample library done. Sample library not done. Oh yes, no, what happened? Oh here they are. Good. And now I'm just going to create a folder here in my new folder. TFP kicks wave table. Drag them into there. Did I just screw that up? I did, I think. How did that happen? I'm going to clean that up later. I'll just pretend you didn't see that. Uh, My bad, but here we are. Okay, so I hope you enjoy that. Um, I Please share if you do anything and try this, any of these experiments. If you sign up to my Patreon, you will be able to get that Max and Max for Live device that I was using. You will also be able to download this sample library and a few more with kicks. So all in all, you will have access to a few hundred IDM kicks if you just can't be bothered. Subscribe and let me know if there is anything else that you would like uh, me to do a tutorial on. Check me out on Instagram as well because that's probably where I post most stuff. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.